It's Mike King, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Looking for a change, hope that pain don't come around no more. Hoping that it rain, remember days at the Alamo, they watch it. All right, so we got my boy, Mike King, jumping off the porch with us today. Welcome, man. Glad to be here, man. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me, man. Nah, I appreciate you pushing up on us too, man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, first off, how are we feeling today, man? <sighs> One day at a time, you know. It's really just a regular day. But uh, I'm feeling good, man. Feeling good, you know, just trying to stay composed like I always do. So it's really, you know, no different than how I approach any other day, honestly. Okay. I got that, man. Yeah. Yeah. And go ahead and shout out your boys sitting back there today, too, man. Oh, yeah, man. You know, we got uh, my brother in the building, man. Remy Ruler, you know, day one, Money Sign Affiliate. Um, came up together uh, in St. Pete, Florida. Um, same school, um, you know, solid dude, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, disconnected, now we reconnected, and okay. uh, you know, working towards building the future. No, that's hard right there, man. Day ones are rare these days, man. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. That's why you only see one up here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Good. It's others out there, but you know, it's only a couple that's really going, you know, saddle up and, and, and ride out with you when the time really called for it. So, you know, you got to keep those close. No, that's real, man. Yeah. yeah. So what are you working on here in Atlanta during this trip, man? What else you got planned while you're in the city? Uh, the purpose for this trip, man, was to come up here and do some press. Okay. Come up here and do some promotion. Uh, come up here and do something different. Hmm. You know, I lived up here for five years. Uh, you know, kind of found out my lay of the land. Really seeing, you know, what was going on to see how I could, you know, fit in and what I really could take from it. Hmm. And, um, you know, it was a good five-year run. Uh, but this time, um, coming at it with a different approach because... The music is better. Hmm. Everything is better, you know, than what it was at that time. So, um, you know, just coming up here trying to, you know, do something different, man. Uh, sitting down with you, having conversations we never had before. Mm -hmm. Sitting on the porch I never sat on before. So, you know, just trying to walk into some new doors yeah. and uh, break down some new walls. I feel that, man. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, like coming from a city like St. Pete, which, you know, typically wasn't known for music up until recently, man. Right. How important would you say it was to like network in different cities? And like you even said, moving up to Atlanta for a few years. Yeah, man. Um, like you said, up until recently, we weren't really known for music. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks to Rod Wave for open up, opening up that door um, for the city and for other artists, mm -hmm. you know, such as myself, such as, you know, Remy Ruler, such as everybody else that's out there doing it. Uh, that's in St. Pete, you know, we got that light on us now. Yeah. So, um, you know, at first it was a struggle, but everybody who was doing it was, you know, doing what they could, where they could, how they could. But for those people who wanted more, you know, they chose to get in that car, get on that plane and get on that road and, you know, go out and get it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's only a handful, but, you know, for the most part, some of the people who was pioneers in the St. Pete game, still got their hands in it, but more so behind the scenes from a boss or a CEO perspective, working with the younger uh, generation, trying to bring them on. So, you know, it's a lot of um, a lot of talent down there. So it's a blessing that we do got some more light on us now. Yeah. 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 And speaking of Rod Wave, you're also a consultant for his label, right? Yes, Hit House um, Entertainment, man. It's a family affair. Um, anybody that you really see um, in that circle, in that uh, type of, you know, setting, you know, somehow, some way, it's connected via family. Um, so, for him to make it as far as he made it, um, you got to keep a solid foundation around you. So, um, you know, just based off who you know, just like with any other thing, you know, you're going to get a lot further in life. You know, simply based off that. Um, forget your skill, forget your talent. It's more so based off who you know. Uh, so, based off who I know, I was able to, you know, get some opportunities um, with his company. And, uh, you know, we are still working together. Um, the sky's the limit for Hit House. The sky's the limit for CFLS. The sky's the limit for anybody that's really out here dedicated to doing what they're passionate about. Yeah. 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 No another number one album for them, too, man. Facts, facts. I mean, you got to take your hat off. We just left the pool party um, oh. a couple weeks ago. And, um, you know, outside looking in, some people may have not have felt like the way security acted was necessary. But it was necessary because he's on the same level as Drake, oh, yeah. as a, you know, person who other people may look at in that light. But because we in St. Pete, because we in Tampa, you know, it's hard for people to give a person their flowers because they 
feel like they know them, they're too close to them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times that's why people have to go away to really get the love that they, you know, or the support, the appreciation that they deserve because when you're too close, people take you for granted. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know. No, that's true. Even when it comes to like jealousy and envy too, right. because they knew him before he blew up. Right. So they start feeling like, man, that should have been me or, you know, right. some shit like right. that too. And that's another thing with this music thing, man. You can't really, you know, compare yourself to others because everybody's in their own lane. Um, it's easy to get discouraged, but I feel like if you believe in what you believe in, shouldn't nobody be able to, you know, knock you off that, uh, off that pivot, you feel me? Mm -hmm. If you believe in it, you're going to stand 10 toes on that. You know, and the pivot is only five toes, but you're going to stand total 10 if you really stand firm in your belief. So somebody like me that's been doing this music shit for so long, you know, a person who don't feel like I am 10 toes in it, you know, I don't know what to call them, but blind. Because it's been going on for too long. Yeah. So now to see me in a situation like this, on this platform, to some people, it's only right. To others, uh, it was only a matter of time. To some other people, they may feel like, damn, I didn't know he was taking it that serious. But it's a time for everything. Nah, that's real, man. Yeah. So how'd you get into making music at first, man? Um, i say uh, growing up in St. Pete at my grandma's house, you know your parents um, got their own lives when they're new parents. So spent a lot of time at my grandma's house. Hmm. So a lot of times, you know, that uh, left me and her there, uh, but me being the only child, I always knew how to kind of, you know, um, you know, entertain myself, come up with my own ways to stay busy. So I watched a lot of TV, and um, at the time, Yo MTV Raps was on TV a lot, so that's what I watched a lot. So I took an early interest in music, and um, a lot of times on Yo MTV Raps, it was a highlight on the North, wasn't really much South mm -hmm. until. Um, the, I think the Ghetto Boys finally had got their spotlight on there. But for the most part, there was a lot of up north spotlight. So my early influence to music came from up north rap. So watching UMTV raps, I feel like I got programmed early into, you know, liking something or having an interest in something and seeing people do something that, you know, at the time I wasn't doing. But, you know, if you see something long enough, you might feel like you're capable of doing it too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I just kind of, you know, Took a liking to music early, and uh, eighth grade came around. We had a talent show at school, and I actually signed up. First time I performed in front of people, mm. and then get to high school, and you know, it was a whole nother story. But the, the the origin came from Yo MTV raps, and first time rapping in front of people was eighth grade. Prior to that, I was just always on the school TV shows, always mm. in front of cameras, always comfortable talking in front of cameras. So. That translated to the studio. Me being comfortable doing that translated to me being comfortable rapping on the microphone. So it all kind of worked out. Yeah. Yeah. When would you say you started releasing music then? Was um, it when you, when you were in high school or when it came afterwards? Or? I released my first CD in high school. Okay. But that was because I saw another guy release a CD in high school. <laughs> so he was older than me at the time. I didn't really know him like that, but I knew of him from his CD that he put out, you know. It was called the uh, the Mike B Project. So his name was also Mike. Oh, okay. So I'm a new kid at the school. Um, see this kid release a, uh, a, a album. So I'm like, damn, that's, that's dope. I'm going to do that one day. He, he eventually graduated. So I told myself, the void is there now. The school rapper left. Now I'm going to be the school rapper. But that was just one ounce of motivation. It was other motivation that came from me finally deciding to put out the music. But um, Mike Brown was the first person who I saw put out some work and uh, motivated me to do the same thing. And um, I passed it out to a couple of my homies in school. They were supposed to bring me the money back. I feel like there was a lot of complication with that. Hmm. So I told myself I'm never gonna sell no more CDs. So after that, years came and I just put out everything for free. Okay, yeah. yeah. So what type of feedback were you getting back then? Was it like encouraging? Back then, I feel like it was always encouraging. Um, I had this one homie named uh, Chad Ellis. He would just catch me in the hallway sometime and be like, say that one rap for me. Oh. Say that one rap for me. And I would have to, you know, remember what track he talking about. And I, I said, and he just always, 
you know, dang, bro, that's so tough. That's, you feel me? So the, 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 the support came early, but, um, you know, it's easy to lose focus when you're not passionate and when you're not dedicated. So regardless of what people were saying, I still had to believe in myself. But luckily for me, I believed it before they, before they said it. So they just kind of validated it. But at the same time, when you got people validating what you already believe, the hard part then comes from not getting too big headed, you know, staying, staying composed, because you also got to realize you didn't do nothing yet. So you really don't deserve all whatever they're giving you, because in your mind, you got to continue to feel like I ain't do nothing yet. So that's why I always keep going, because I feel like I ain't do nothing yet. And you end up going to FAMU after, uh, after high school? Yeah, end up going to FAMU after high school. Um, but going back to high school and the music shit, man, um, I was a new kid at an, in, in the neighborhood. I met another guy uh, in the neighborhood. He brought me over to some other guys who had music dreams. And um, pretty much from there, uh, it was like we was forming a group, but I didn't really align with their dreams or their vision for the group. So I think I went wrong by not just expressing that because I just stopped coming. Hmm. But I took, you know, what I learned and created my own group. So my boy Remy was a part of that first group, you know, Money Sign. Okay. That's what we called it, Money Sign. And a lot of that inspiration came from Rockefeller. You know, Jay-Z's my favorite artist. You know, I call him my role model. Never even met them before, but just how they moved in a unit. It was a lot of them. They had a brand, you know, everybody was rapping and it just looked, you know, it, it, it looked apart. So Rockefeller really laid a solid foundation for me to see what I wanted my group to be like. So tried to form, formulate the group, you know, parallel to that. We had uh, a lot of artists, we had subgroups. They had their own groups, but it was all under one umbrella. Hmm. So, kind of like a Wu Tang. Kind of like they a Wu Tang. Had different subgroups under yeah, too. Yeah, so people knew of Money Sign. You know, they knew of it. Um, they also knew of the group who I left. That was Naughty Head. They knew of them too. So at, at Lakewood, we was the two two rap groups. You know, same neighborhood. Eventually, we came together and uh, we performed at this uh, event called lip sync. Normally you lip sync other people's songs, but we got the clearance to do our own song. So Money Sign, Naughty Head came together, big track. We chose the hottest beat at the time. I think it was that Jaquan, Everybody Get Tipsy. Okay. And uh, we mixed it in with that R. Kelly, Feeling On Your Booty song. My boy Seven, he super producer. He was a producer for Rod Wave as well, early on in his career. but. Um, yeah, man, Seven Dope on the producing tip, so he put something together nice for us. We came together for that, did the performance. Everybody loved it. So early on, you know, we had a lot of, you know, music motion in high school, but this was before social media. This was before YouTube. So we didn't have that camera on it. So unless you was there, you don't know. Yeah. But that's why I, uh, I fuck with Meek Mill, because he had that camera on him around the same time we was doing what we was doing, and it got him where it got him. So I feel like if we had that spotlight or that camera on us where people were seeing it, how you can go back and see some of Meek Mill old YouTubes, like that same shit was going on where I, where I was at. You know, I was one of the main ones. So it's like always knowing that, you know, the, it get greater later, you feel me? That's what I always told myself. So. You know, I choose who I, who I uh, take stuff from. You know, I do a lot of research. So my boy Mike Brown, Meek Mill, Jay-Z, you know, the Naughty Head Money Sign situation really helped me. Uh, we, we was making diss tracks versus each other. So just like, you know, the, the, in the real industry, the, the core of hip hop started with, you know, people, you know, competing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's what I come from. So it's like, that's what I was used to. So it, it gives you a different drive, a different type of motivation when um, you got that, you know, person challenging you and you got people watching. So, you know, it's just been a long time that this music has been in my life. So now it's just interesting to see how I'm evolving with it and how the game is evolving, how I have to learn how to evolve. You know, moving up to Atlanta was a 
a learning process. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I got a certain style. I came up here going to these showcases, 20, 30 artists at a time performing. I'm hearing different styles. I'm hearing what the crowd like. So I'm thinking to myself, if I want that reaction, I got to change it up. Mm. I got to rap on different beats. I got to use different flows or I'm going to keep getting the same results. So coming up here helped me, you know, open up my eyes to, you know, what really, what really matters the most in, in terms of being an artist. Cause you can't just satisfy yourself. Cause that's what I did for a long time. Try to satisfy myself, but you know now it's more so you know balancing it out. So that's the hard part. Yeah, I think I always say like that's got to be a tough part for an artist. Right. It's like how do you find that balance between what you want to do right. and what the fans and consumers want to hear? Though? Right, right, right. But the core of you know what got me here, very solid foundation, man. I feel like I done went through a lot as an independent artist. So you know the only way to go from here is up because I don't know what else could go wrong. I got you, man. Yeah. yeah. So you and your boy are both rocking this carefree lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about creating that brand and what it stands for. Man. Uh, going back to high school, man, it really uh, shaped my mind because it was my first time really around more, more people that looked like me in a school setting. You know, I went to class with people who looked like you, you know. So a lot of the girls who looked like me thought I only liked girls who looked like you. So it's like, you know, damn. I'm used to being misunderstood. I'm used to people assuming. I'm used to people jumping to conclusions without asking. So coming to Lakewood around all these new people, you feel me? He went to school with most of the people we went to high school with because he went to Bay Point. I went to John Hopkins. So coming into Lakewood, you know, for me, it was a lot of putting names with faces. So, um, you know, being in St. Pete, Lakewood was considered Hollywood high, you know. We, 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 to the other people, lived on a, a better side of town. So they considered it Hollywood High. And just talking to other people that went to Lakewood in the 80s and the 90s, and to hear some of their stories, compared to my stories, it's like, dang, it was like that for a while. Yeah. But basically, man, um, it was a school that really cared about, or it was a school where you had to find interest in material stuff to really fit in. If you didn't have any interest in material stuff, you're going to feel like an outsider. You might not even walk in certain hallways because you're going to get talked about. You, 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 you're going to have to walk around just because you don't even want to deal with what comes with wearing what you got on. When in high school, it's like, damn, looking back, unless people was really going out working and going out to get, you know, more, they was working with what they had, what their parents gave them. But for another student to you know, talk about that seven o'clock in the morning just because some people, you know, they ain't trying to hear that. They can't take that. But it was just the culture there. Nobody really meant no harm by it. It was just the culture and um, crazy culture. But it showed me that, you know, when I come here, I got to look a certain way. Or if I don't, it's going to be a problem. I'm not going to get light. I'm, I'm not going to feel me. But that was ninth grade coming in, learning this stuff about this new environment. Like, dang, because I always was into fashion. But being around all these new people, all these new personalities, it's like, you know, a lot come with that. So it's like, you know, you could either clash or you could just stay to yourself and just hope people, you know, respect you. Or you can conform and, and, and talk about people, too. You feel me? I ain't never talk about people. I just stayed to myself and it came with what it came with. You feel me? So it was a crazy time, man. I talk to people today and they always say, you know, they hated high school. Like, you feel me? I don't know, bringing up Rod again, we went to the same high school. So before I ever heard a Rod Wave song, I saw a video of him in the hallway rapping a cappella. you feel me, singing a cappella. So it's like, damn, um, Lakewood has changed. Lakewood, if you drive past it today, it's not the same no more. You feel me? More, more kids walking. You feel me? When we was there, the whole parking lot was full. You couldn't find a parking spot. So it's just the, the, the times is different. So it's like, I don't know what Lakewood was like for Rod, but I know what it was like for me. And um, I enjoyed it because the classwork wasn't difficult. The people that was cool. And, um, you know, I just made the best of it, you know, but it was a crazy time, man. If you're from St. Pete, you know, if you're from that era, you know. But 
it was just a crazy time. So is that when you started the brand back then? Or? Started the brand back then, man. Um, when I got to Tallahassee, I'm, I'm okay. so drifting off on that question. I, I, I lost sight of the question. No, so you good. <laughs> basically, I brought up Lakewood because of what it taught me. Mm -hmm. So then I get to Tallahassee and I'm a freshman on campus and I'm thinking college is more laid back. You don't have to come like you're going to, you know, the club every day. So I went to finish line, got five for 20 tees, basketball shorts, thinking it's, it's, a, it's really a regular day now. Mm -hmm. But um, it wasn't a regular day. It was, a, it was the same type of thing on another level. So I realized I don't have to wear the same brands I was wearing before because I'm seeing people from different places now. I'm seeing different, different senses of, uh, of fashion. So I'm feeling like now I can do what I want to do, express myself how I want to express myself, you know, despite the opinions of others. Because in high school, it was always about the opinions of others. You feel me? But that's why you got to just, you know, be uh, mentally strong. You feel me? You got to be, your mindset got to be strong to deal with people's opinions. Because especially in an industry like this, you know, I just posted a video uh, the other day and I had to do with some opinions. But the brand simply st stems from doing what make you happy. And going to Lakewood, yeah, I wore what made me happy, but I also feel like I, you know, didn't wear what made me happy or didn't, uh, you know, try a certain thing because it, it doesn't go. So now it's just more like being fearless, really being comfortable, you know. So Lakewood taught me that I can be fearless. I can be comfortable with my sense of, sense of fashion. So the brand came from, came from that came from what I went through in high school. And then coming to a new environment, seeing, oh, I don't have to be like that. Because a lot of my um, influence come from the skate culture. And that come from middle school. So being interested in what I was interested in in middle school, coming to a high school where I wasn't around the same type of peers, I got to convert more urban, you know? So I had to buy the urban brand. So when I got the tally, I said, I'm done buying them urban brands. You know, so that's, you know, when I really came up with the idea to do my own, but I didn't really put this on a shirt until I, I graduated from college. I didn't know what I wanted to do with the brand. I just knew I had to have a brand because, again, I got role models, mentors who I never met before, Currency uh, at the time. Wiz Khalifa really came into the game and changed the culture, you know, and I feel like it came from them stand true to themselves. They built cult followings. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just currency, it became Jet Life. It wasn't just Wiz, it became Taylor Game. It wasn't just, it, it, it's not just Mike no more, now it's CFLS. So I had to create that, but it didn't come overnight. So now I got friends who, you know, developing businesses, but, or want to develop businesses, but they don't understand marketing. They don't understand just the, you know, the ins and outs of really convincing people and persuading people and trying to get people on board. You got you to gotta do that consistently over time. So, like, I don't know how long I've been on social media, but I'll just say 10 years. For the last 10 years, no picture that I ever posted on social media went up without CFLS on it. Like, you ain't going to find one. Ain't nothing getting posted without getting that stamp. Nowadays, ain't nothing getting worn without getting that stamp. No, I feel that, man. Uh, you just shared a post. Um, there was some something with Beyonce and the brand. Can you break that down? What happened? So that was a good segue. So basically with the brand, man, um, I started spinning my cheese, getting shirts in bulk, hoping people buy it to a digital route. Mm -hmm. So when I went the digital route, I partnered with a company called Etsy. You know, okay, still yeah. got the uh, partnership with Etsy. But basically, um, designing shirts is always the hard part. You know, you can want a brand all you want, but the hard part is coming up with the design that other people going to give you money for. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you got to be creative. You got to think outside the box. You got to kind of cater to people. So I try to cater to um, not only myself, but to the people. And I used an image of Beyonce with CFLS on that image. And I put it on the shirt and I put it up for sale. You know, a couple of weeks go by, 
I get an email from, you know, her team saying what they're saying. So I had to make a decision. Yeah, it's going to be tough to fight that one. Yeah. Her bag runs a little deep. <laughs> yeah. But me being a small fish in this big pond, you know, it's impressive that they are that savvy with their research mm -hmm. to find that one shirt in this one place. But basically, it was more so like a cease and desist, yeah. more so like a, you know, we taking this listing down unless you can prove to us. That but, you got permission. But right? I don't, you know. But that was just a, a interesting email to get. But um, yeah, man, I chose to, you know, remove it and uh, come up with some other designs that don't have her face on it. Yeah. Or anybody else's face. So, you know, yeah, it's, that was an interesting situation, though. But it's definitely it was definitely worth telling the world about because you get emails all the time from, you know, record labels. My boy always showing me emails all the time you get from record labels. But dang, do you know if it's real or fake? Mm -hmm. So an email like this. Like, I'm oh, thinking, you know that's I'm, what yeah, <laughs> yeah. But people get emails all the time, and I feel like that one was worth sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a good lesson to go through. Yeah, know? most definitely, man. Yeah. Most definitely. All right, so you got two new projects out right now, man. Yeah, two out right now. Um, Side B just came out yesterday. Yep. So. Uh, nowhere to somewhere. Nowhere to somewhere. Um, with this one, man, I just tried to. Do what I always do, which is release music, but coming up with names for the albums is always hard. So now, um, sometimes I reach out to friends or it just comes to me one day, but the name for this album actually came from one of my good friends, you know? So to get that from him, you know, spoke volumes in terms of what he sees, because you know, your, your, your closest circle is usually your worst critics, you know, because they feel the most comfortable to, to, to tell you anything to tell you what's, you know, what somebody else really might be afraid to tell you. So for him to, you know, be one of my worst critics, but for good reason, and then for you to give me that, it's like, you know, you, you see the evolution too. And you know, that's always a, a, a humbling, uh, a warming experience for me because, you know, you can think however you think about yourself, but when people tell you the truth, you either gonna listen or you gonna not listen. I'm always gonna listen long as it makes sense. So I always ask, you know, if anybody tell me anything, you know, before a person jump to a response, and this is a, a, a tip for anybody to use in conversation, you feel me? You can just simply follow up. I don't care what a person say to you. If you know that it's something that you don't necessarily agree with, all you gotta do is say, based off what? Throw it back on them, give them the chance to explain where they got it from before you just you know, to really see if it's justified or not. If they got an explanation after that question, don't even waste your time because it ain't based on shit. No, that's very true. So in terms of like carefree lifestyle, people think, you know, the name is what it means, like literally. Carefree lifestyle, oh, you don't care. And I care too much, I care too much, you feel me? But I care more about what, you know, matters most to me. So, and that's subjective for everybody. So, you know, depending on what matters to you, that's what you're gonna care about. Just because my brand is Carefree Lifestyle, don't think I don't care about shit. No, I got and you. that's the, you know, part that I don't think people understand because somebody commented something on a video this week. Oh, this isn't Carefree Lifestyle <laughs> because they saw me expressing myself in a manner they never seen before. People miss, um, people miss the point a lot of times when you don't explain it to them because everybody's mind don't work the same way. So if you put something in front of somebody's face, the only way they really gonna comprehend it correctly is if they got some context. A lot of times they can't develop that context on their own, they need help. I just posted a video, no context. People need help explaining it or understanding it. So. I feel like if you just, you know, think slower, you'll understand better. A lot of times people want to think fast, but you're not good enough to think that fast. You know, it's okay to calculate, you know, people saw what I posted a couple of days ago and started questioning my mental health. Hmm. All because they never seen me react that way. 
but I think it's a deeper issue. You feel me? All people saw was a video of me yelling at another man who made my sandwich wrong. But it wasn't just that. It was what the man said to me that provoked me. So it wasn't just about the sandwich being wrong. It was about you telling me that I'm the reason the sandwich was wrong. But I didn't make the sandwich. So how am I the reason it's wrong? So, you know, without that context, without me explaining my side, without me showing both sides, people only saw what they saw, which makes sense. But I was happy that they saw that because people are only used to seeing a certain thing. So when they see a certain thing, they believe a certain thing. So I don't know how long I've been on social media, but however long I've been on it, people have had the ability to believe a certain thing because that's what I show them. But I ain't never shown them my full personality, but they caught another glimpse of it this week and they ain't know how to respond. But that ain't my fault because people who know me, people who, you know, know me well enough to know me, they, they weren't surprised because people ain't used to seeing people express their passion. People used to, because you can't see passion. You can't see it. So when people see it for the first time, they shock because they ain't never, you don't just see it. Passion is something that's inside of you. So for me to want to rap, for me to want to, you know, get a better response on my music from people, I always felt like, dang, if they knew how passionate I was, maybe they'll buy into it more. But how do you show your passion in your tone of voice? People don't like Meek Mill because he yell, but I call it passion. Feel me? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta listen. You gotta, you gotta listen around that. People don't know how to listen around stuff. Growing up, both parents in the household, they always argued, but it always was for a reason. It wasn't just for no reason. So me seeing conflict resolution programmed me to feel like it's okay to express yourself verbally. My mother taught me it's okay to express yourself. It's okay to say how you feel up until a certain point where you go too far. Now I need to you know, check you. But I knew it was okay to say something. A lot of kids didn't grow up like that. A lot of kids didn't grow up being able to say nothing. A lot of kids didn't grow up being able to drink before they was done eating. I'm drinking while I'm eating. Just because, what's the big deal? Now I feel like if I don't drink before I eat, I'm gonna choke. Or if I don't drink while I eat, I'm gonna choke. But some people got enough uh, mental strength to wait, to eat slow enough to where I don't even need no drink. I ain't, I ain't there yet, but everybody different. But seeing that conflict resolution with my parents has molded me into somebody that's okay with conflict because there's always a way to find a resolution. So people just saw me in a conflict, but they didn't see the part before the conflict where I was trying to find a resolution. So anybody that was like, you know, you could have handled it differently. No, I couldn't have because I handled it the exact way that I know best. And that's with some sense until they, until all sense is out the window. Yeah. And people never see me when all sense is out the window. Hmm. So I don't blame them, but I'm happy for them for finally seeing another side of me that they didn't see before. Cause now y'all know I'm human. I just made a song. Uh, they treat me like an animal at the carnival. When you go to the carnival, you go to the zoo, you, feel me? you just walk by, you see them animals in them cages, you just be looking at them. You, you go there to see them because they do whatever they do. You know, they think the animals ain't got no feelings. They think the animal life is all good because they on display. You feel me? They, but nah, bro, people are human, bro. People got feelings the same way you do. I just don't show them like y'all. You feel me? Nah, I got you, bro. So what else are you working on right now, Mike? What else is coming up for you, bro? <sighs> 10, 20, 9, 29 album drop. So two more weeks from now, um, another album coming. And back home, I just uh, started going back to some studios that I used to go to. So I got a lot of new music coming, a lot of new music that's different. You know, every time is a challenge. I don't feel like, you know, people, I don't know how other artists record, but I'm efficient. Book a session at 12 start writing at six. I'm doing the 
No, book a two hour session at 12, start writing at seven. That two hour session, I'm leaving with five to six songs. Not wasting any time. No, four hour session. No, let's just say two hour session, I'm leaving with four to five songs. Three hour session, I'm leaving with five to six songs. So it's like, I'm usually in there by myself if, you know, one of my homies, you know, not available to come. But a lot of times, you know, if it's not a day where I can go record, it's a day where I feel like I didn't do everything I could do that was productive. But every day, every chance that I get, I can go to the studio, that's a day where I'm productive. So I feel like it just keep me going. It, it, it's just not only something to do, it's, it give me a sense of accomplishment. So a lot of times people wake up and they, you know, get on the same uh, wheel and they do the same thing, but it don't really give them a sense of accomplishment because it's the same thing. So depending on what you want in life, that's what's going to determine what you accomplish. So I just told my boy the other day, you feel me? You didn't, and he ain't like it. He still ain't talked to me since, but I felt like he needed to hear it. You feel me? You got to have ambition. If you don't got no ambition, what are you really going to want in life? You, you, you just going to take whatever you get. So unless you okay with taking what you get, you feel me? You, 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 you I, I don't know how a person live like that. So I had to tell my boy, you never wanted nothing. You ain't never want shit. I said, name one thing you wanted that you wouldn't have got. And he couldn't tell me that. But it was all because of the lifestyle that was given to him early. Everything was, everything was there. So he didn't have to want for nothing. But outside of that, then comes your goals and, and your dreams. So now we this age and I'm trying to tap into his goals and his dreams to see how you gonna reach him. Cause right now you're not doing nothing to reach him. So I give a lot of my friends a hard time because I want people to give me a hard time. That shit make you stronger. That shit push you. You feel me? I ain't really got too many people giving me a hard time because they think everything all right. They think everything is straight. You feel me? They, they, they don't think I need the advice. They don't think I need the push because of what they've been seeing this whole time. But you feel me? Growing up in the household, a lot of people wouldn't know mom, dad, but I ain't never go to them like, mom, tell me about this or can you help me with this? Neither did my dad either. We never talked about personal shit. So I dealt with all that on my own or found a way to, but no knock to them. They just probably had their own personal shit they dealing with that they trying to figure out too. So, you know, I grew up realizing that certain stuff you got to think about on your own and really come up with a way to handle it on your own because everybody else not always going to give you, you know, the best advice or they, they're not going to have no advice for you. Or if you, you just can't go around listening to people's advice either. But sometimes people got used to doing that problem, go to a person, that person tell them what to do, they run with that. Fuck shit happened. Now they blaming this person. Whole time, you should have figured it out on your own. Or you should have came up with some idea and then put it with their idea and then you had a better idea. All you got is what they got. So, I don't know. This shit crazy. The dream killers. You remember what I say, telling about the dream killers. I'm from a city where your own family will kill your dreams. You feel me? Your own family will kill your dreams if you're from St. Petersburg, Florida, if you're not careful. Because they had time to chase their dreams before you, and they didn't. So how they going to help you chase yours? Why, why would they motivate you to chase yours? They going to sit back and live their life and let you live your life. You feel me? Until you give them a problem where they got to talk to you. But... It ain't people just out there pushing people to do better, especially nowadays, especially with the state that we live in now. You feel me? I feel like it's, a, it's an attack on women right now. The, the, the female artist that's the biggest in the game. You know, look at the content. You feel me? Look at the subject matter. You feel me? What they teaching them. You feel me? It's, it's, it's detrimental. You feel me? Queen Latifah came out talking that talk. You and I, T.Y., now they talking, you feel me, crazier talk. So it used to be an attack on the men, now it's an attack on the women. The men in the clear now, because they think we already fucked up. <laughs> so true. now they got to fuck the women up. Yeah. So, you know, they got some work to do because 
Nowadays, it's, it, it, it seems like it's more boss women than boss men. You feel me where I'm from? It's more boss women opening up businesses, opening up, you know, the doors to their new locations than it is dudes. So it's like, you know, they got a lot of work to do, but, you know, it's not easy to get inside somebody's mind. It's not easy. I mean, it's not hard to get into inside somebody's mind, rather. But it's, it's, it's not hard to get inside somebody's mind that, that, that you know, got sense. If, if a person got sense, it's not going to be easy to just penetrate their force field, bro. You're going to get blocked out. You're going to get blocked out. So I, you got to do a lot of blocking out. Yeah. You feel me? You got to choose who you let in. You feel me? You can't just, you know, stand next to anybody. You can't just be out here taking pictures with anybody. You can't just be out here riding in cars with anybody. You can't just be out here commenting on anybody's posts because people going to see it and think you with them. And now you look like, you know, something that you're not. But you... We in control of how people think about us. You feel me? I knew that early. I knew that because of what what what, I, what happened in, in in Lakewood in high school. I knew that early. You feel me? I come this way, they gonna think this. These these people ain't never even talked to me, but I heard they thinking this. I know they thinking this. You never even talked to me. You feel me? Outside looking in, people don't know shit, but they think they know everything based off the 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 the, the clues or based off what research they have done. But what about the research you didn't do? People think they did all the research. You ain't did all the research, you know? That's why certain shit still coming is a shock. You shouldn't be surprised by shit. You supposed to bend new. You supposed to bend new this is gonna happen. You supposed to bend new. That's why my bro was like, bro, you wanna practice? You wanna, you know, no. You wanna, you feel me, like mock interview questions or whatever? No, cause this is, this is the regular day. Mm -hmm. It's just a regular day, bro. That's it's just supposed to happen, bro. It, it, it's all about timing. You feel me? But now I'm sitting up here with a lot of good music in my vault. If I would have sat up here years ago, I might have felt the same way, but it wouldn't have been the real feeling because the music wouldn't have been as good. The quality definitely wouldn't have been as good because of where I recorded that, you know? But shout out to my nigga uh, Ryan McBride, man. I used to live up here, but I would only record back home with him. So I would write up here, go home to record. You know, in them five years I lived in Atlanta because I just had a good relationship with my boy. But then, you know, as we get older, you know, uh, you know, things happen, you know, schedules don't align. So that's when I started going to different studios and trying to find a new studio home. But I never wanted to do that, but I'm glad I did because it, it only made me better. It only made me better. And, um, you know, different engineers, you know, I got like, three main engineers I work with right now. You know, um, my boy Jit, my boy Madison, and my boy Zito, you feel me? They all in three different places. So it just depends on the vibe I wanna go for. It just depends on what I wanna go for or, or, or you know, where do I go? But you can't just be working with anybody because everybody got different sound. Everybody's not gonna give you that genuine feedback. You know, it's all about the vibe, the energy in the place. You can't just be spending your money with people just because they they, 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 they doing something, you know? Like it took a lot for me to spend money with you, you know, but I respect it. So it's like certain boxes you gotta check, you feel me? As an artist, certain shit you gotta do. But as an artist, it was certain shit I never wanted to do because so many people do it. So it's like, they did it already. If you do it, you just gonna be in the same category as them. What you gonna do different, you feel me? Like. I ain't want to just come up here blowing smoke in your face, literally. You know, I'm, I'm cooling, I'm chilling, you feel me? Clear mind, yeah. you know, ready to, you know, take over the world. Hoping people understand that this shit is genuine, this shit is a real thing. Like I'm supposed to be, I, 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 I'm supposed to be gone, but I ain't been doing the right thing. So that shit was never gonna happen. So if I do the right thing, it's gonna happen. But for years I've been trying to, do it without doing the right thing. But in other people's lives, it might be the, the right thing, but I know I, I know I ain't been doing the right thing the whole time because there's so much more I can do. So I just want to let people, you know, use me as an example of, you know, what happened when somebody really believed because you got to believe in yourself. You got to have confidence in yourself, bro, if you really want to, you know, be something, but you got to decide what you want to be. People don't know what they want to be. I knew what I wanted to be early. I knew what I wanted to be early. 
graduated college, started working, 401k, didn't know really nothing about it. But I'm thinking, why would I sign up for this one? I'm finna have a record deal soon. 401k, man, you gonna put money in here just to stay. But if I'm finna be leaving, why am I thinking about staying? And then here we are these years later, no record deal yet, for real, for real. I got distribution, but no major. But that all come from me not doing the right thing, but still working at it, though. But now I feel like all them years of work, all them songs I recorded with JIT last year, uh, 100 songs, you feel me? My boy gave me an opportunity of a lifetime, you feel me? Pay me monthly, not by the hour no more. That was a game changer. So now I'm in here recording myself. I wanted him to get to the point where when Mike come, he don't need me. He gonna record himself, he gonna do his own thing. But after he record, he gonna need me to mix because he can't mix. But we built up that type of understanding. So I was in there recording myself, keyboard in the booth with me. Rim the same way, you feel me? He the one put me on that. He, he introduced me to the dude, Jit. You feel me? He been had a relationship with Jit. Jit was uh, Rod Wave's first engineer. One of the first dudes engineering Rod. You feel me? So it was just a small world how shit come because Jit, another passionate dude, but you know, shit happens where, you know, you got to make decisions for yourself. You know, you can't just be waiting for other people to do stuff. You got to do it yourself. So then my boy Madison, my boy Madison, I watched him build his studio up from, from nothing. Now my boy's swinging, and um, he the only one I work with over there. He got about eight other engineers now, but I only work with him. But at one point, he only had two or three. But that growth, you feel me? I want to get with people who growing. You feel me? That's what I pride myself on, you feel me? Genuine vibes. I ain't faking shit. I ain't forcing shit with nobody, you feel me? And if a person do feel like we're closer than we are, that just come from whatever interaction we had, you feel me? But I ain't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it 100 with everybody. I ain't finna force it with nobody because that's, that's, that's the fastest way to create stress. I want shit to be cool, man. So that's why you gotta speak on shit. That's why you gotta speak on shit, feel me? I just had a, uh, a good friend of mine. I ain't, man, I ain't even gonna call him a good friend cause we weren't never good friends. We was just cool. We weren't even cool, but we just associates. You feel me? So in my mind, you know, I, I, I never owed you no loyalty, but I feel like I owed you respect. So that's what I give you, respect. You feel me? Give you respect, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you about no dumb shit, bro. You feel me? Whatever you think I want, I don't want. Cause I got it already. Especially if it's a female. You feel me? Dudes only have problems with other dudes when it's over females. Should be over money. But a lot of times it's over females. And I pride myself on never being in them situations. Because if she yours, you can count on me not wanting her. I had to make a video about this the other day. But I feel like it really boiled down to trust me. You gotta trust who you with. You can't just be jumping into relationships with people if you don't trust them, you feel me? And anything you hear in my music, bro, is really the art of my life, bro. You know, I'm gonna put, you know, twists and spins on shit, but a lot of times I record so much because all I'm doing is talking about what happened. All I'm doing is talking about what happened, you know? But I've also learned to be more entertaining, you know? Staying true to myself, but also saying what sound good. So, you know, some things is manifestation, you know? And I'll be listening to old songs from years ago, like, dang, I got that now. That's crazy. All right, Mike, you got any more shout outs you'd like to give before you wrap it up here, bro? Shit, man. Um, everybody who's been rocking with me this long, you know, salute to y'all. You know, 17, 29, everybody over there. New brotherhood, new family, man. My boy Money Red, my nigga E, my nigga Treasy, my nigga Charlie, you know, everybody over there who been holding me down. My nigga Remy Ruler, man. Like I said, man, we disconnected for a while, but you know, now we back on road and you know, we on the same page. So my boy been, been here since day one, man. So the sky's the limit. Um, anybody that, you know, didn't believe, I hope you believe now. I hope you starting to believe. I hope you starting to listen. Um, you know, I know I'm leaving people out, but you know, it's a, who, North Carolina, everybody, 
all around. My, my boy in New York, my nigga D, you know, love New York. Wanna live there one day. Um, my nigga Ace out in LA, you know, Tally niggas, man. Met him there, Ohio nigga, man. I still gotta get out there for real. Um, I don't know, man, the list goes on, but this type of opportunity like this one, you gotta, you know, just appreciate and respect because, you know, y'all laid the platform for artists like myself to come on here and and and, and be heard. And um, you know, that's 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 really all we can do, you know. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank everybody for rocking with me this long and you know, I thank you for everybody that's gonna be along the journey along the way. And um, you know, my cousin Frank, Big Bo, uh, Hit House family. You know, Fats, my nigga Chunk, everybody, man. Um, my Live 21 family, my nigga Reggie Reed, they doing big things over there. Um, sky's the limit, man. As many partnerships as possible. OG's Unlaced, new shoe store just opened in Tyrone Square Mall. Grand opening was today. Uh, we buying, we selling, we trading. So if you're ever in Tyrone, make sure you stop by OG Unlaced. Um, bring some of your old shoes, new shoes, whatever, man. But just trying to partner up with as many brands as possible. So if you out there and you trying to, you know, work, I'm always willing to work, man. So jump in the DM, Mike King CFLS on Instagram. And, um, you know, see you at the top one day. Looking for a change, hope that pain don't come around no more. Hoping that it rain, remember days at the Alamo. They